show you how to fit the stage 5 pinion gear. The first task is to remove the transportation bush. You need a special locking tool so we can fix the rotor on the male shaft only. Never hold the female shaft because this could slip the timing between the two rotors. Check the key, make sure there's no burrs on the keyway, uh, otherwise the gear will get stuck as we come to put it on. So I've just cleaned it up there with a little bit of emery and a file. So we're just heating the pinion gear up, approximately 125 degrees Celsius. Just apply a small amount of torque while the gear is still hot. I'll just take this spanner off in a second. These bolts are normal right hand thread. Easy way to remember if it's a single bolt, left hand thread. Now we wait for the gear to go cold to touch. Next, we're going to uh, fit the pinion gear to the stage 3 rear end. A couple of things you have to remember on this size rear end. The pinion bolt is left hand thread, as is the stage 1 and the stage 2 rear end. The torque on the bolt is 250 newton meters. This time, we don't need a special tool for locking the male rotor only. We can just use a standard spanner, 50 mil. So remember to remove its left hand thread. <coughs> With the tension now off the rotor and the springs inside the air end, the male rotor will not be able to turn, it'll be quite tight to turn. So do not be tempted to uh, try and turn it over at this stage. Once the pinion gear is fitted back in place, and the bolt is torqued up, you will then be able to turn over. Prior to fitting the pinion gear, just ensure there are no burrs or marks on the shaft that will inhibit the pinion gear from being inserted over the shaft. Tell when it's inserted properly because you'll hear that little click as it hits the uh, foot bearing brace. 
So same situation. Apply a little bit of torque while the gear is still hot. Remember, never use the spanner to fix the female, only the male shaft, because we will damage the timing. Now the pinion gear is cooled down to touch, we can apply the final torque, which for the stage 3 end is 250 newton meters. Remember, left hand thread, single pinion bolt. So we lock only the male rotor, never the female. Left hand thread, 250 newton meters. And you can see now the air end is nice and easy to turn. Some other things to remember when we package the air ends, there's a DCI rust paper inside, both chambers, inlet and outlet ports. There's also transportation plugs. We also have to remember the transportation plugs in the oilways, very important to make sure these are removed. Depending on the machine these go on, ZR5, this will be blanked off. On the newer style Zs, we take the oil feed for the burrings through this port. Remember to always fit a new oil blanking plug every time we install an ur end. We don't want to reuse the old ones, as you can imagine a lot of work goes into installing the ur end and for it to leak on this at the very end would be a disaster. So always fit Remember to remove the, the red transportation plugs, blanking plugs for the oilways. And on this one, stage 5 air end, going onto a ZR5 block, we have O ring. This will seal off the port against the mounting flange on this side. There's no oilway coming through this port, it's blocked off. The burring oil feed for this air end will be taken from the back end and it's delivered through the air end to the front bearings by this pipe. So again, this is blanked off. Now we've fitted the O-rings to both air ends, so each air end will have its main mounting flange O-ring on the little spigot here. here. You can Apply a bit of grease around these if you want to. We also have the blanking plate in stage 3. We have the O-ring in stage 5. Remember this is a, will be blanked off on the flange. And you can see the corresponding and the eccentric ring for the HPR end. This is where the main O-ring sits. And the LPR end. So again, this has been highly detailed for the video but in the field. Uh, her ends could have been fitted, they could have been banged up against this flange. Make sure there's no burrs or any sharp edges that can damage the her end or damage the O-ring and affect the her end being fitted. One other important uh, thing to remember when we're fitting the her ends is that they are finished in a, in a really square orientation. We can have a situation where the her end is slightly kicked over from the clearance around the bolt holes. So when we're fitting the ur end, leave the bolts loose and you can see by rocking the ur end from left to right, get it central and then lock it up. You can imagine the pinion gear sat on the bull gear here. As the ur end is rotated, the pinion gear can move away and move in towards the bull gear. So it's crucial that we get it located central. It will also aid us when we're fitting all the other parts onto the ur end, the throttle valve, the elbow, everything's connected to each other. So if the ur ends are slightly off centre, it'll become tricky for a assembly.
when we're lifting the stage five ur end, it's important to ensure because of the size and the weight of the ur end, we want a really true lift. So spend a little bit of time making sure you've rigged it up correctly to ensure that when we lift it up, the lift is as square as possible. So you're checking with the square across the front, but you're also checking that the ur end is straight in this plane as well in this axis. If it's leaning back too much, as it probably is at the moment, it'll cause a problem. You can nip the o-ring, gear train up, and mesh correctly as we're going in. So spend a little bit of time getting it as true as possible, and save your time later when you come to fit. For the stage three, similar lifting techniques, although now the ur end is a lot lighter, so we can manoeuvre and position a little bit more easily. So we're still using the M16 eye bolts, shackles, this time we're just using the two holes, as you can see, and this will give us a nice square lift. And if you do need to change the position at all, now it's very easy, we can change, there's no problem. Just remember to take your time when inserting the ur end into the gearbox, coming up to the mounting flange. Don't rush it, make sure it's nice and true. Don't nip the o-ring if you can help it. So as we're inserting the ur end, make sure it's nice and true. You can hold the back of the ur end as it's been guided into the gear tray. Just be careful as the gear is coming up to the bull gear. We don't want to slam the faces or chip the teeth. So take it nice and slowly. Nice and level.